Hello everyone, and welcome to my guide for Glamour and Dyes in Final Fantasy XIV. In this video, you're going to learn all the basics for Glamours, Dyes, and other cosmetic options. Not so far as where do I find this specific piece of gear, though I will provide some resources that will help you out in the description below. My intent is for this to be the most comprehensive guide out there, and I believe it will be at its time of release, so let's get into it. First of all, you'll need to unlock the ability to glamour and dye your gear by completing the quests If I Had a Glamour and Color Your World, given by Swergame in Western Thanaland's Vesper Bay once you reach level 15 on any class. If you started in Ulda, you can hoof it there right at level 15. Otherwise, the soonest you can get there will be once you progress to the level 15 quests in the MSQ, which will unlock the airship. Then, you can make a detour once you travel to Ulda for the first time if you wish. If you pass that option up, there is a faster option once you unlock the airship. The Ferry by the Arcanist Guild in Limsa Lominsa unlocks at the same time, and you can take it straight to Vesper Bay. You will also come here many times throughout the Aram Reborn story, so don't worry about it too much. Anyway, back to the quests. All of Swergame's quests involve bringing her orange juice. For the Glamour quest, you just talk to a nearby NPC who gives you some. For the Die quest, you must purchase the food item orange juice from this merchant who was also comically close by. Once completed, you will unlock the Glamour and Die systems respectively. If you have a Disciple of Hand class, aka a crafter, leveled to 15, she offers the quest Absolutely Glamorous that involves orange juice as well, which will unlock a vendor. This vendor sells books which allow you to craft your own Glamour prisms, clear prisms which are required to craft Glamour prisms, Glamour dispellers, and the Emperor's new gear. This gear, when glamoured, will show up like you're wearing nothing. The Emperor's new shield is also available at the Gold Saucer for 100,000 MGP. To follow up on the die quest, when your crafter reaches level 30, they will be able to craft a fair amount of dies using pigments from level 28 gathering nodes. The die quest also unlocks a level 50 quest in Mordona called Simply to Die For, which unlocks the ability to acquire the dieable level 50 artifact armor. A quick tip for planning out your glamours before we get into the meat of the video. You can right-click gear and select try on to see how it looks. Selecting save or delete outfit will allow you to try on multiple items at the same time. You can also right-click the gear you're trying on and select enable die preview to see how that gear looks dyed. Selecting a die will show it on the try on screen. Since we've been given some glamour prisms and dies, let's go learn how to use them. I find Gridania to be the fastest city to get to an inn at so off we go. Glamour prisms can be used in one of two ways. First, the old-fashioned, not as efficient way. Select the Cast Glamour action, or right-click on an item and select Cast Glamour. This allows you to glamour one item to look like another by consuming a prism. With a Glamour Dispeller, you can also select Remove to change an item's appearance back to normal this way. Second, by using a Glamour Prism to store a piece of gear in the Glamour Dresser at any inn. This will let you use that item's appearance over and over again without consuming additional prisms, as long as it stays in the dresser. The Glamour Dresser has a 400 item limit, however. This may seem like a lot at first, but if you start collecting gear, you'll hit the wall sooner than you think. Let's go over some restrictions for glamouring. In the simplest terms, you must be able to wear the gear that you are glamouring. So you cannot glamour a white mage robe onto a dragoon's armor, for instance, and you cannot glamour any gender or race restricted gear that you could not normally wear. Also, the required character level of the item you wish to change the appearance of must be greater than or equal to the glamour you are casting on it. For example, you cannot make a level 10 gladiator sword look like a level 25 gladiator sword, or a level 50 pair of white mage boots look like a level 52 pair of white mage boots, but you can make a level 80 dark knight sword look like another level 80 or lower dark knight sword. Item level does not matter for this. Since we were talking about storage before, let's talk about the armoire. The armoire is another place where you can store gear, which has no limit, but only very specific gear can be stored in it. For example, you can store the level 50 gear you get from your job quests, but not the augmented level 50 gear, nor the level 60, 70, or 80 job gear. You can store pretty much all of the seasonal gear, pre-order, collector's edition, and veteran rewards, but only most, not all, achievement reward gear. The nice thing about the armoire is that unless you store an experience earring, or something you may need later, you will probably never have to remove anything from it. I'll provide a link to which items can be stored in the armoire in the description below. 
Before we get into the Glamour Dresser, three important notes about storing gear in either of these options. One, on each piece of gear, there are these three symbols in the top right of the details window. The shield shows that you can apply your free company crest to that gear, more on that later. The other two symbols are for the Glamour Dresser and Armoire, which if illuminated, shows that the item can be stored in them. The only exceptions I've seen that you can't store in the Glamour Dresser are relic weapons, in which case you need to acquire the replicas. Two, the gear you store must be at 100% condition. There are repair vendors stationed outside the inns that you can use in case you need them. And three, storing gear will reset your spirit bond progress, so if you have materia ready to be extracted, do so before storing that gear. To store gear in the Glamour Dresser, you will need Glamour Prisms in your inventory. I still get caught with them in my Chocobo saddlebag, so I figure it's probably worth mentioning. <laughs> when you open it up, you'll see two windows. Glamour Dresser, where you can see what you have stored, and Glamour Creation, where you choose what you want to store in the dresser. You can also see how many prisms you have on the bottom right of your Glamour Creation window. To add gear to the dresser, simply click on it and select Yes. You can see that there are tabs in the Glamour Dresser you can use to view what you have stored by type, and you can also filter the gear that appears to those only wearable by a certain job. If you run out of room, you can right-click and remove gear you aren't using, and store it with a retainer or elsewhere to make space. As another space-saving option, if any of the items you stored can be purchased from a Calamity Salvager, sell them or delete them if you're not using them, since you can always buy them again. Now that we have gear in the dresser, if you want to glamour over items you're currently wearing, you could right-click the gear in the dresser and click Apply Glamour, or you could make a glamour plate by clicking Edit Glamour Plates. Glamour plates are outfits that you curate and can glamour onto full sets of gear at the same time. They are also how you utilize gear in the armoire for glamours. Once you make an outfit and save the plate, you can apply them now or in any major city. They also have one more nifty function. If you open up the character window and open your gear set list, you can right click on a gear set and select Link to Glamour Plate. Select a glamour plate and click Link Gear Set, and whenever you switch to that gear set, it will automatically glamour your gear to the chosen glamour plate as long as you're able to use glamour plates in the area that you're in. As a last note on plates, when in the glamour plate window, the gray button after the 15th glamour plate is the dispel button. This will let you use multiple dispellers on multiple pieces of currently equipped gear simultaneously. There's a couple more intricacies to the glamour dresser to go over, but doing so involves dyes, so let's switch gears and learn how to die. Either by selecting the die action or right clicking on a piece of gear and clicking die, opens up the item dyeing window. It will show you how the gear looks now, and clicking through the dies will show you how it looks if you dye it that color. You can also click the middle left button under your character portrait to show all of your gear, then click the middle right button to preview what your gear looks like with every piece dyed the selected color, but you will still have to dye each item individually. The very first die, Terebinth, will dye an item back to its original color. If you have the die you want in your inventory, select die, and it will change the item's color. Now that we know how to die, let's go over how dies interact with glamours. The item you are using to glamour covers the item you are wearing, and if dispelled, the item returns to normal. So if you're wearing pants you have dyed black, and glamour them with yellow shorts, they will appear as yellow shorts. If you dispel the glamour, they will revert to undyed pants, losing the black dye you had on previously, no terebinth needed. Now if you store yellow shorts in the dresser, they will be yellow when you glamour them. If you didn't use a terebinth or dye before storing the item in the dresser and want to change its color, don't worry, you can dye them in the dresser by right clicking on them and selecting dye without having to remove the item and spending another glamour prism. You can also dye items in the glamour plates. This way, you can use the same item with different colors and different plates if so desired, but this requires the dye to be in your inventory to be consumed when you save the plate. There's one last bit of gear customization we have available to us. Company Crests, that shield symbol I mentioned earlier. If your free company has it unlocked at company rank 4, you can affix your free company's crest onto applicable gear. To apply it to your gear, you must go to your free company's grand company headquarters, not your personal grand companies. For example, my grand company is Twin Adders, and my FC's is Maelstrom, so I have to go to Maelstrom HQ and talk to the OIC Officer of Arms there. Once you find yours, click Add or Remove Company Crest from Gear. Select the gear you want to add it to, or select Add to All. You can do the same with removing the crest. It's not much, but it's a nice little way to rep your free company. 
that pretty much covers all the information regarding glamouring and dyeing gear. But wait, there's more! You can also dye some furnishings while you're in your apartment or house. Open the housing menu in the social tab and select furnishing color. This will open a list of furnishings you have placed that are dyeable. Right click on one and select paint to open the dye menu, and you can watch as it changes color before your very eyes. For the most part, metallic colors don't work on furnishings. There may be some exceptions, but none that I saw while I was messing around for recording. One last glamour related thing. Summoners can also unlock Eggy Glamour by completing the quest An Eggy by Any Other Name in the Arcanist Guild once they've completed the level 50 summoner quest. This allows them to change their Eggies back into carbuncles and even mix and match their colors if they like. Here's a quick example from the wiki on how to use the system. Now I'm sure there will be some of you asking where you can get Glamour Prisms and certain dyes, and I'll try to cover it very briefly. For Glamour Prisms, you can craft them as I mentioned before, but you can also trade PvP Wolf Marks, bicolored gemstones from Shadowbringer's Fates, and Grand Company Seals for them. Grand Company Seals seem to be the most popular, if not most efficient way to acquire them. For dyes, if you can't find the dye you're looking for by making them with pigments or buying them from city merchants or your housing junkmonger, they are going to be from a few different places. They are either going to be from Arum Reborn Beast Tribes, Venture Coffers from Retainer Quick Ventures, or bought with Skybuilder's scripts in Ishgard Restoration, all of which can be bought and sold on the market board. The Venture Coffers are where you get the general purpose, special, and metallic colors in the last tab. You can also buy unsellable versions of these dyes on the online store if the prices on the market board are ridiculous like they are now on my server, or if you're just not having luck with your retainers and must have the die. I've included some useful links below. There is a Yorzia collection, which is a great resource to look up how full sets of gear look. It also has a section where players upload their glamour creations and share what they use to make them. My most used resource, Garland Tools, to figure out where to get stuff, and the armoire page of FFXIV Collect, another great site that I mentioned before. And that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it or learned something, give me a like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought, or if you have any questions in the comments. See you later, Warriors of Light.